and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Battle Report brought to you by the Legion Wargaming. Today we find ourselves on the world of Speramus Optima in the aftermath of a cult uprising. Although the rebellion has been quickly put down by the planetary forces, one of the world's major shrine complexes lies in ruins. This complex of ecclesiarchy buildings has until now housed many sacred relics, but they are no longer safe here. The Adeptus Ministorum has decreed that the relics now belong on one of their shrine worlds, but the most holy ordos of the Inquisition have commanded that they be sequestered to their keeping. The Ecclesiarchy has dispatched two of its hardened battle missionaries, who are even now whipping the local planetary defence troopers into a religious fervour to act in their name. But the Inquisition will not be denied and, with a word in the ears of the dreaded chamber militant of the Ordo Malleus about possible continuing chaos taint on this world, the Grey Knights have been summoned. The battle today is Crusade, 1,750 points, with Hammer and Anvil deployment. There are three objectives. They have already been placed in the ruins of the Shrine Complex. One in the corner of this section of the Shrine. One on the upper levels of the central building and one tucked away in the ruined debris surrounding the base of that building. The Astra Militarum will be deploying at this end of the table and the Grey Knights will be deploying at this end. Let's take a look at the armies. This 1,750 point Battleforged Grey Knights Army is a Nemesis Strike Force and has as its single HQ choice a Librarian who has been upgraded to Mastery Level 3 and he has brought along three Elite choices in this detachment. The first is a squad of four Paladins, three of them have Nemesis Falcons and one has a Psy Cannon. He has a squad of ten Purifiers, they have two Incinerators and a venerable dreadnought with an assault cannon. For troops we have a squad of five terminators they have nemesis force swords and one brother has an incinerator another squad of terminators they have three halberds the justicar has a stave and this squad also has a silencer and the final troops choice is a strike squad consisting of seven Grey Knights, they all have Halberds and one brother has an Incinerator. For fast attack, this detachment has a squad of seven Interceptors. They have three Halberds, an Incinerator and the Justicar has a Demon Hammer. And the other fast attack choice and the final unit in this detachment is a Storm Raven gunship with twin linked heavy bolters and twin linked assault cannon. This force will more than likely be deploying entirely either by deep strike or coming on in the Storm Raven. Let's take a look at the planetary defence forces that the Ministorum priests are leading towards the shrine. This 1750 point Astra Militarum Battleforged Army consists of a single combined arms detachment and has as its HQ choice, a company command squad, they have a missile launcher team, a Vox and a Master of Ordnance. But the real leaders of this force are the two Ministorum Priests. Blessed Barnabas the Book Carrier and his apprentice Josiah are two of the Ecclesiarchy's top field lunatics. And they have succeeded in whipping the planetary defence forces of this planet into an angry mob. The first troop's choice is an Imperial Guard Infantry Platoon. They have a Platoon Command Squad with three Melter Guns and a Vox. Two Imperial Guard Infantry Squads. The first has a Vox and a Plasma Gun. And two Heavy Weapon Squads, both with three Laz Cannon. And the second troop's choice of this army represents Barnabas' favourite type of justice, Angry Mob Justice. They have a platoon command squad with three melter guns and a vox and then five imperial guard infantry squads all five of these squads have plasma guns and three of them have voxes and they are going to be deployed as one huge angry mass there are two more troops choices 
They are veteran guardsmen. The first squad has three plasma guns and the second has a heavy flamer, the demolitions doctrine and is mounted in a chimera with a hole mounted heavy flamer. And there are also three heavy support choices in this army. Three independent Lehman Russes. We have one Lehman Russ battle tank with a hole mounted LAS cannon, one Lehman Russ battle tank with Sponson heavy bolters and a heavy bolter in its hull and a Lehman Russ executioner with plasma cannon sponsons and a hull LAS cannon. This is a huge mass of men. How many frothing deranged guardsmen does it take to kill a Grey Knight? Let's find out. Moving into deployment. And as the last keeper of this shrine climbs the ruined tower to begin his lonely morning vigil, he cannot believe his eyes as he sees the massed ranks of the Planetary Defence Force marching into the outskirts of the complex and deploying into a battle line. The PDF have arrived. They have their veterans placed on their left flank, the squad in their chimera and the squad on foot with their plasma guns just emerging from this part of the shrine. In the centre Barnabas himself is leading his huge mob of 50 guardsmen forward. They are intending to move into the main area of the complex as quickly as possible and take possession of the relics. They are followed up by their platoon command squad. Over on the right flank, Josiah, he's leading a smaller combined squad of 20 guardsmen. They are already very close to one of the relics and they are backed up by their platoon command squad. These priests are experienced in battle and they have wasted no time in ordering the heavy armour and the heavy weapons to take up good firing positions in the ruins. Over on the right flank we have one Lehman Russ, a squad of guardsmen with last cannons in this part of the ruin and they are backed up by another Lehman Russ. The PDF commander himself, he has taken up position in another part of ruined shrine building and over in this larger ruin we have another squad of Las Cannon and the Lehman Russ Executioner. Barnabas does not want to order the heavy weapons to open fire on this shrine complex but he will not hesitate if it means that he can recover the relics and knock the High and Mighty Inquisition off of their perch proving the Ecclesiarchy's supremacy. But the Keeper of the Shrine is confused. Why have the PDF formed such an impressive battle line as there does not appear to be any enemy approaching? The Grey Knights have not deployed anything at all. They are intending to deep strike straight into the heart of the Shrine to seize the relics before the Planetary Defence Forces can reach them. But the Astra Militarum deployed first, so Unless the Grey Knights can seize the initiative, we go into Astra Militarum, turn one. And as the Grey Knights have failed to seize the initiative, the priests see a chance for them to get their hands on all of the relics before the Inquisitorial forces even arrive. And to that end, the huge mass of PDF in the centre have been ordered forward. They are led by Barnabas and they are already entering the outskirts of the first of the large shrine buildings. It's the same story over on the right flank as the other priest Josiah has already taken possession of the closest relic. His squad of 20 is followed up by their platoon command squad and Barnabas's huge squad is also being followed up by their command squad. Over on the left flank, the veterans in their chimera they are moving as fast as they can. Maybe they are going to make a run on the far relic in this building over here. Meanwhile, the rest of the Astra Militarum forces have held position. The squad of veterans and all of the heavy weapons teams, the command squad and the three Lehman Russes, they are looking through their gun sights, just waiting for any opposition to appear. That brings Astra Militarum movement phase turn one to a close. Are we going to see the same again 
In Astra Militarum shooting phase turn one. Let's see. End of Astra Militarum shooting phase turn one, and these ruined buildings echo with the sound of only one order. And that order is move, move, move. Both Barnabas and his squad of 50, and Josiah and his squad of 20 successfully received the orders of their platoon commanders, and they have run forward. Josiah's squad has already formed a cordon around one of the relics, and Barnabas's squad, well, they are looking like they may press all the way on into the far building. The Chimera, containing the veterans, has moved flat out. So, there's a lot of force approaching on the Astra Militarum left flank. Meanwhile, the rest of the guard line have once again held position. They have no targets, but they are a formidable firebase. That brings Astra Militarum turn one to a close. The Grey Knights have taken a huge risk here. If they get a bad set of reserve rolls, then it could be a disaster for them. If they get a good set of reserve rolls, they can deep strike, run, unleash their incinerators. That could be a critical blow to the Ecclesiarchy's hopes. We shall see going into Grey Knights turn one. Start of Grey Knights Turn 1 and the Grey Knights successfully made 4 out of 5 of their Deep Strike Reserve rolls. The first to arrive was the Librarian. He has brought his Paladins with him and he has his sights set on the Veterans Chimera. The squad of Terminators with their Incinerator arrived with pinpoint accuracy and they have their sights set on Barnabas' huge squad. Unfortunately the Strike Squad, they tried to Deep Strike next to the Terminators, they scattered on to the Guardsmen and they have had to go back into reserve. Meanwhile, the guardsmen see a teleport flare directly in front of them as the other squad of Grey Knights Terminators deep strikes very bravely. There are 15 Grey Knights on the table against a huge number of guardsmen. Will it be enough? We shall see. As they have all arrived by deep strike there is no movement phase so we go straight into Grey Knights Psychic Phase. Turn 1. End of Grey Knight Psychic Phase Turn 1, and with 9 dice, the Librarian did consider summoning up a Vortex of Doom to deal with the Chimera, but he was put off by the fact that there are two squads of his brothers too close for comfort, so he threw all nine of his dice into Cleansing Flame, and he was rewarded as 10 Strength 5 hits were inflicted on the side armour of this Chimera, and it was wrecked. The veterans have come spilling out, they are not pinned. Worryingly for the Grey Knights, they do have a demo charge and a heavy flamer. But, nevertheless, scoring first blood in their first psychic phase is a good result for the Sons of Titan. Let's see how they get on in their first shooting phase. End of Grey Knight shooting phase, turn one, and this squad of Terminators decided that the veterans with their demo charge, their heavy flamer, were... The threat that needed to be eliminated, so they ran, they washed their incinerator over the veterans and followed it up with a volley of storm bolt fire. They have taken out eight of the veterans, including the demo charge and the heavy flamer. The two remaining veterans have passed morale, but that is a threat neutralised. Meanwhile, the librarian and his paladins and the other squad of terminators have all run forward to form a defensive line at these fences and they open fire with their weaponry on Barnabas' huge squad. The Paladins managed to gun down four guardsmen and the Terminators to their front managed to take out another five but it looks like a drop in the ocean at the moment. These Terminators look very vulnerable as we go into Astra Militarum turn two. End of Astra Militarum movement phase turn two and it looks like we are going to be treated to quite a spectacle here today. Barnabas has ordered his men to fix bayonets. They are going to overwhelm the first line of Grey Knights Terminators with a wall of screaming guardsmen. That should be a very, very interesting assault. Meanwhile, Josiah's squad is moving forwards through this shrine. It looks like he is going to lead his men up to take control of the relic. Up on the top floors he has left the one on the ground floor in control of the platoon command squad and the Lehman Russ is rumbling forwards in support. Meanwhile 
the rest of the guard firebase they have held position they now have targets and there's a lot of firepower here we have two squads each of three las cannon another battle cannon here and crucially the Lehman Russ executioner and the veterans who have just shuffled to bring all three of their plasma guns into rapid fire range these terminators may not be here for much longer this is an extremely interesting battle let's see how the guard get on in Astra Militarum shooting phase turn two and our Astra Militarum shooting phase turn two and the Grey Knights have had a reprieve that could have been much much worse Josiah started by leading his man up onto the first floor of this building meanwhile the platoon command squad they shuffled a little just to maintain their hold on the relic and get some cover the guard line then opened fire and it was all very disappointing the best display was from these veterans who managed to take out two of the Grey Knights Terminators with their plasma guns they did lose a plasma gunner as his gun overheated but the executioner was absolutely dreadful scattering all over the place the only casualty managed to cause was one guardsman from Barnabas's huge mob the two wounds that the plasma guns caused on the Grey Knights Terminators were saved by their invulnerable save slightly better performance by the Las Cannon teams as they managed to snipe out one of the paladins guarding the librarian and another one was taken out by the Las Cannon from the Lehman Russ right at the back in these ruins the company command squad had no effect with their missile launcher and the master of ordnance's barrage scattered wildly so the guard for all of their firepower have only managed to take out two Grey Knights Terminators and two Paladins that is quite a relief to the Grey Knights but this could be the critical event of the turn as Barnabas leads his huge screaming mob into these Terminators in Astra Militarum Assault Phase Turn 2 and Astra Militarum Assault Phase Turn 2 and we have seen absolute carnage as the huge mob of PDF charged in one was taken down by Stormbolt of Fire from the Grey Knights Terminators and the Grey Knights hefted their halberds and hacked down another five before the Guardsmen could strike in return Barnabas had whipped them up into a fearful rage they managed to inflict 40 wounds on the five Grey Knights Terminators they failed 10 of their two up saves so this guard combined squad could have killed them twice over they were torn to pieces and we think that these huge squads led by priests are probably some of the best assault units in 40k the number of attacks and wounds they inflict is scary so the Grey Knights there are only six of them left on the table but they are hoping desperately that more of their nemesis strike force arrives going into Grey Knights turn two start of Grey Knights turn two and it is with much relief that the remainder of the nemesis strike force has arrived the strike squad they have fared better with their deep strike this time round they have arrived they have an incinerator meanwhile flying in to the support of their brother librarian is the purifiers and the venerable dreadnought mounted in the storm raven it looks like the librarian has decided to concentrate a lot of his force on annihilating Barnabas and his very dangerous squad of guardsmen and over on the left flank the interceptors have arrived with a very accurate deep strike they are intending to clear the rabble of guardsmen out of this part of the shrine from this side and take possession of the relics will they be able to do it let's see going into Grey Knight's movement phase turn two and of a very short Grey Knight's movement phase turn two the units that were already deployed have moved these terminators particularly the brother with the incinerator is looking gleefully at this mass of guardsmen as they only managed to consolidate one inch following their successful assault they are a very juicy target for the incinerator 
and also for a potential cleansing flame as the Brother Librarian and his two remaining paladins advance up to this fence line. It seems that Barnabas has got a huge bullseye over his head this turn. Let's see. Going into Grey Knight's Psychic Phase, turn two. End of Grey Knight's Psychic Phase, turn two, and this game has been turned on its head by the Grey Knight's Brother Librarian. He started off with a very weak cleansing flame. He threw six dice at it, but only managed to get it off with two, and then he only managed to get three hits on this squad, taking out two guardsmen and the two remaining veterans that were making their way up this fence line, but then he threw nine dice at Vortex of Doom and with a gesture at Blessed Barnabas the Vortex opened up right over his head it sucked him to his doom along with three more of the planetary defence troopers the librarian has a chief slay the warlord he has spun this game this squad without Barnabas leading them are now looking like lambs to the slaughter Let's see if they are going into Grey Knight shooting phase, turn two. End of Grey Knight shooting phase, turn two, and it would be safe to say that the Knights of Titan have struck a critical blow. Fifteen of this squad lie dead due to fire from the Storm Raven, the Paladins, and crucially, this Terminator's squad's incinerator. They have held morale, but. It is more than likely that the Brother Librarian and the Terminators will try to finish them off with a charge. This strike squad newly arrived contemptuously turn their backs on this combined squad and content themselves with annihilating their platoon command squad with a hail of storm bolt of fire and their incinerator. Meanwhile, the interceptors, they ran into cover and they also open fire with their storm bolters and incinerator and they have taken out eight members of Josiah's squad they're still fearless there is still one Ecclesiarchy priest leading the Astra Militarum he will not give up but the Grey Knights it looks at the moment like their risk right back at the start of the game has paid off although the guards still do have quite a strong fire base let's see if the Grey Knights can make any of their charges in. Grey Knights Assault Phase, turn two. End of Grey Knights Assault Phase, turn two, and these guardsmen must have set their plasma guns to maximum setting as two of them exploded like miniature suns as they targeted the paladins that were charging them. But they were rewarded as, with a hail of plasma fire, the paladin with the side cannon was taken down. Nevertheless, the remaining paladin and the librarian made their charge. They'd hoped to be supported by these Terminators, but they could not move fast enough to join the assault. But it didn't matter in the end, as the Paladin hacked down three Guardsmen. The Librarian smashed another one to pieces with his stave, and they took no damage in return. The remaining Guardsmen, they fled. So, they're down to less than 25%. They have been almost eliminated as a threat now. The Grey Knights have had an absolutely fantastic second turn. Let's see how the guard respond going into Astra Militarum, turn three. End of Astra Militarum, movement phase, turn three, and with the death of Barnabas, Josiah has found himself unexpectedly promoted to Chief Nutter, and he has developed a plan. His guardsmen, they have moved up, they are infesting this building now, there's still plenty of them left, and they are going to combine their fire with their command squad to take out the interceptors. This building contains two relics, and the Astra Militarum are still holding them, although the Brother Librarian and his paladin are entering the ruined ground floor. Meanwhile, the guard on this flank, they are ordered to annihilate the interloping strike squad, and the veterans, the last cannon team and the executioner, well, they, in an ideal world, will take out these Terminators and the Paladin and the Librarian. The Guard have no answer to the approaching Storm Raven, but it is not a priority just yet. And unfortunately, the remnants of Barnabas' huge combined squad, they have failed to rally. They continue to fall back. But the Guard, they're holding two objectives. They've lost First Blood, they've lost Slay the Warlord. But 
they still have every chance of achieving a victory here in the name of the Ecclesiarchy. Let's see how they get on in Astra Militarum shooting phase, turn three. End of Astra Militarum shooting phase, turn three, and Josiah is extremely happy. His guardsmen have done him proud in this phase. The veterans, they successfully accepted the order to front rank fire, second rank fire, and these terminators are no more. Two went down to the plasma guns, and the last one went down to five las gun hits, which happened to roll a quintuple six to wound. And the other big news over here is the brother librarian and his paladin are no more. The Lehman Russ executioner has managed to damage itself, but a blast from its las cannon took out the paladin, and that left the librarian to face six Imperial Guard las cannon teams, and he was blown to pieces. The company command squad and this Lehman Russ failed to do any damage to the strike squad, but two were taken out by a battle cannon shell from the Lehman Russ on the guard's right flank, and another one was taken down by a panicky plasma blast from the retreating guardsmen. So there's only four Grey Knights left here, and Josiah has directed his fire very well. His squad accepted a front rank fire, second rank fire order from their command squad, and they took out two of the interceptors. The command squad themselves took out another two with their melter guns. So the Grey Knights are looking very, very thin on the ground. They've also lost Slay the Warlord. So the guard, with a brutally effective round of firing, are right back in this game. Let's see what the Grey Knights can do in Grey Knights turn three. End of Grey Knights movement phase turn three and it looks like the Astra Militarum presence in this central building is not going to last for much longer. The Storm Raven has begun to hover and has dropped off two combat squads of purifiers. One of them has two incinerators and of course they can summon up cleansing flame. They have the supporting fire of the Storm Raven itself to clear out Josiah's guardsmen from the top floors of this building and the platoon command squad holding that. Looks like the Grey Knights are going to incinerate every guardsman. We shall see. Meanwhile, drop down from the clamps. The venerable Dreadnought has stomped this way and he is going to try to take out some las cannon teams with his assault cannon. The interceptors, they have engaged their personal teleporters. They have warp shunted all the way from that part of the ruined shrine. They are trying to create as much havoc and confusion as they can in the guard back line. See if they can draw some firepower away from the shrine building. And the remaining members of the strike squad, they are moving to take on the Lehman Russ executioner with their halberds. So the Grey Knights, they are looking to strike in some key areas of the battlefield this turn. Let's see how they get on. First we have Grey Knight Psychic Phase, turn three. End of Grey Knight Psychic Phase, turn three, and the Purifiers, they summoned up a Cleansing Flame. It took out three members of Josiah's combined squad and incinerated all five of the Platoon Command squad. Their subjective, the Relic, is now held by nobody. So a good result there, and the remaining few dice were used by the Strike Squad to give themselves Hammer Hand in preparation for their attempt to destroy the Lehman Russ Executioner. A good phase for the Grey Knights. Let's see if they can have a good shooting phase. Grey Knight shooting phase, turn three. End of Grey Knight shooting phase, turn three, and the Knights of Titan are now firmly in possession of this central shrine building. One combat squad of purifiers open fire with its two incinerators and its storm bolters. They only left Josiah and one guardsman standing and the hovering Storm Raven absolutely shredded them with its bolters and its assault cannon that allowed the other combat squad to forsake firing and run into the ruin itself. They are closing in on one objective. It's hard to see how the guard are going to take any of these objectives now. Over on the right flank, the venerable Dreadnought managed to shred two las cannon teams in this building with his assault cannon, but the one remaining team 
has held and the interceptors took out one last cannon team with their storm bolters the two remaining teams over in this building have also held morale so the grey knights they are looking to be in a very good position particularly regarding holding the objectives in the center let's see if they can finish off an excellent turn with the strike squad assaulting the Lehman Ross Executioner in Grey Knight's Assault Phase Turn 3. End of Grey Knight's Assault Phase Turn 3 and under the influence of Hammerhand the Strike Squad easily tore the Lehman Ross Executioner to pieces. That has capped off a very very effective turn from the Grey Knights. They are in a position where really they are commanding the objectives and the guard they have been pushed right back. Let's see what the guard can do going into Astra Militarum Turn 4. End of Astra Militarum movement phase turn 4 and with the death of both of the Ecclesiarchy priests the PDF commander is beginning to wonder whether this whole enterprise was a good idea in the first place but he is committed now and he is sending his few remaining units to try to take back the shrine building containing the two objective relics so this Lehman Russ has rumbled forward to hold one relic it is getting ready with its weaponry to try and blow away the purifiers meanwhile the veterans with their plasma gun or two plasma guns they're advancing across the open to try to reach this building and the commander is relying on his LAS cannon teams to clear out the interceptors and his fleeing guardsmen, they have still not managed to rally to clear out the strike squad that have just destroyed the Lehman Russ execution. It's a big ask, but he does have a missile launcher in his own squad and a master of ordnance. Maybe it will be enough. It's looking very desperate, although there are not that many Grey Knights left either. Let's see how the guard get on in Astra Militarum shooting phase, turn four. End of Astra Militarum shooting phase, turn four, and they have done quite well. The Laz Cannon teams, they managed to snipe down one interceptor hiding in the trees. There's still two left, but good news in the guard back line as all of the strike squad were shot down. The fleeing guardsmen were very inaccurate. They didn't take down any, but the combined fire of the advancing veterans and the command squad itself managed to shoot down the four Grey Knights surrounding the smouldering Lehman Russ executioner with the last Grey Knight being shot down by the PDF commander's own plasma pistol. The two Lehman Russ battle tanks they opened fire on the purifiers in the ground floor of the ruined shrine. The Lehman Russ right at the back managed to take down one with his battle cannon shot but the advancing Lehman Russ took out two with his battle cannon and another one with his snap shooting heavy bolters there is only the Justicar left and the guard they are back in control of this objective so quite an effective turn from the guard with no assaults we go into Grey Knights turn four end of Grey Knights movement phase turn four and they realize that the main threat to them are the Lehman Russ battle tanks with their formidable battle cannon so they are making moves to take them out. The Justicar from the first combat squad of purifiers he is leading the other combat squad forward towards this Lehman Russ they're going to try and get off hammer hand and tear it apart with their nemesis force swords and the only two grey knights down this end of the table the two remaining interceptors they are moving to take out this Lehman Russ and the Justicar here has a demon hammer which should help. Meanwhile, the Storm Raven has hovered back trying to use the central building to give it cover from the guard fire and it is going to try to annihilate these guardsmen advancing across the open and the venerable dreadnought has stomped forward. He's going to try to take out some more last cannon teams with his assault cannon. Looks like the Grey Knights could really really take this battle beyond the guard if they have a good turn now. Let's see, they need some hammer hand in Grey Knight Psychic Phase Turn 4. End of Grey Knight Psychic Phase Turn 4 and with a very low roll for warp charges they had very few dice to use and the squad of five purifiers they did manage to get hammer hand in preparation for their attempted charge on this Lehman Russ but the interceptors failed 
to summon up their own hammer hand, but they're just a Gahazadeemon hammer, maybe they won't need it. Let's see. First we have Grey Knight Shooting Phase, turn 4. End of Grey Knight Shooting Phase, turn 4, and with the Crack Grenade from the Interceptors doing nothing to this Lehman Russ, and the Crack Grenades from the Purifiers unable to hurt the front armour of this Lehman Russ, it was left to the Venerable Dreadnought, and the Hovering Storm Raven to cut down as many Guardsmen as possible. The Storm Raven did well and cut down six Guardsmen. Advancing across the open, there's only two veterans left here. They have passed morale but they're looking rather forlorn. Meanwhile, the Venerable Dreadnought contented himself with shredding the remaining last cannon team on the roof of this building with a burst from his assault cannon. So. The crucial phase of this turn is about to begin. The Grey Knights need to deal with the Astra Militarum Heavy Armour in Grey Knights Assault Phase, turn 4. End of Grey Knights Assault Phase, turn 4, and the Interceptors made it into this. Lehman Russ Battle Tank, the brother with his halberd, managed to do one glancing hit. And the Justicar, he only managed one hit, but he brought his Demon Hammer crashing down onto the Battle Cannon. So, it's is destroyed and that is a good result for the Grey Knights. They would have liked this rust to be destroyed but taking out its battle cannon that's not bad but unfortunately in the central shrine disaster has befallen the Knights. Neither the lone Justicar nor the other squad of purifiers managed to make their charge against this Lehman Rust. Their hammer hand is wasted and they're gonna have to stand up to its firepower and potentially the firepower of some more units from the guard firebase. That could prove critical. Can the guard capitalise going into Astra Militarum? Turn 5. End of Astra Militarum movement phase, turn 5, and this squad continues to fall back, but the PDF commander is hoping that their snapshots can take out these interceptors. The Russ has backed away. He's going to try and take one out with his LAS cannon. Meanwhile, the veterans are advancing to add their couple of LAS gun shots to everything else in the guard force. We still have the command squad with their missile launcher and the master of ordnance. These LAS cannon, crucially this Russ. They are all going to try to blast the purifiers out of the central shrine. If they can do that, well, they're holding an objective. The Grey Knights, they're holding one with a hovering Storm Raven. But this one, that's currently unheld. And the only other unit the Grey Knights have is the Venerable Dreadnought. He's a bit far away. So, can the guard pull it off? Let's see. Astra Militarum shooting phase, turn five. End of Astra Militarum shooting phase turn 5 and the veterans failed to take out the lone Justicar with their LAS gun shots. The two LAS cannons, they managed to get one hit but rolled a one to wound so the PDF commander had to order his own missile launcher team to take aim and finally a crack missile streaked out and blew the lone Justicar to pieces. That allowed this Lehman Russ to land his battle cannon shell right on top of the other squad of purifiers blowing three of them to pieces but there are two purifiers left in the ruins of this shrine and they are fearless so that is going to be very close for possession of this building meanwhile the fleeing guardsmen they did manage to shoot down one interceptor with a hail of snapshots and the Lehman Russ took out the Justicar with a blast from its LAS cannon so there are no Grey Knights left here, there are very few Grey Knights left at all. There are two purifiers in the building, the Hovering Storm Raven holding one objective and the Venerable Dreadnought who seems to be too far away to be of much assistance at the moment. This has turned out to be an incredibly close game. Let's see what the Grey Knights can do going into Grey Knights turn 5. End of Grey Knights movement phase turn 5 and the Grey Knights have realised that they are holding one objective very safely with the Hovering Storm Raven so they have decided that as long as they can keep the guard away from the two objectives in this building they should be able to achieve victory so the Storm Raven has hovered round still holding the objective but it's going to give fire and the Venerable Dreadnought has stomped towards that building to give fire as well. The Grey Knights tactic is just to take out any guardsmen that are near the building. So these veterans, they have to go. And the LAS cannons, 
represent a threat from range, so in all probability they will be targeted as well. Meanwhile, the two remaining purifiers, they have been tasked with the most important job this turn. They have to get off Hammerhand and they have to get rid of this Russ. Although if they do fail, they will still contest this objective. It may be enough. We shall see. Going into Grey Knight's Psychic Phase, turn 5. End of Grey Knight Psychic Phase turn 5 and with the roll of a 1 they only had 4 dice to use and the purifiers used all 4 to get hammer hand off. They only succeeded once, the guard used their 1 dice to try to deny it but they failed so the purifiers have hammer hand. Now they have to make their charge unlike the previous turn. But first we have Grey Knight Shooting Phase turn 5. End of Grey Knight shooting phase turn 5 and although it seemed incredibly wasteful the Storm Raven targeted the last two veterans advancing on the central building. Its firepower was ridiculous overkill, they both went down but the guard really do need to be kept away from these objectives. The venerable Dreadnought opened fire on the Laz Cannon teams in this section of ruin and shredded another one but the last team refuses to flee. The guardsmen have with the exception of this large squad been very very brave during this battle. Let's see if the Grey Knights can put themselves into a very strong position in Grey Knights Assault Phase Turn 5. End of Grey Knights Assault Phase Turn 5 and once again the Purifiers have failed to negotiate their way through the broken ruins. They have failed their charge against this Lehman Russ. So that is very disappointing for the Grey Knights. Let's see, are we going into Astra Militarum, turn 6? We're going to roll and we will be right back. And the Astra Militarum are not willing to give up on this battle just yet. We have gone into Astra Militarum turn 6 and at the end of their movement phase everything has held position with the exception of the fleeing guardsmen. They're too far away to be any help now so it all falls to this Lehman Russ which is holding this objective. He needs to take out these purifiers and the rest of the guard, the one last cannon team remaining the Master of Ordnance and the Missile Launcher team in the command squad along with the Lehman Russ's Laz Cannon. They are all ordered to shoot down the Storm Raven. That will knock the Grey Knights off of this objective although the Dreadnought may be able to stomp back and get there so ideally both of these Grey Knights vehicles need to go down. It's a big ask. Let's see how they get on. In Astra Militarum shooting phase turn 6. And of Astra Militarum shooting phase turn 6 and the Lehman Russ managed to take out both remaining purifiers. He blew one to bits with his battle cannon and his wildly swivelling heavy bolters took out the other. There are no Grey Knight infantry left. Meanwhile, the guard firebase targeted the Storm Raven with the senior officer ordering his squad to bring it down. After the last cannon missed, the last cannon on the Lehman Russ managed a hit, but the Storm Raven jinked. There were harsh words to his own squad, and the missile launcher streaked out, and a crack missile took out the heavy bolters. Then the Master of Ordnance called down a pinpoint barrage right on top of the Grey Knight's aircraft and penetrated and took out the assault cannons. But that was all the guard had to give and the Storm Raven remains jinking and with very few weapons left, just its missiles, on one hull point it is still holding an objective. Very disappointing for the guard, but they have done very, very well. Let's see, they could still snatch victory if this game goes on to turn 7. That is assuming the Grey Knights don't manage to achieve much in Grey Knights, turn 6. End of Grey Knights movement phase, turn 6, and the Venerable Dreadnought has decided that it's going to be very difficult for him to scale this building to claim this objective, so he has ordered 
the pilots of the badly damaged Storm Raven 2 hover forwards and hold it themselves, he has a much better chance of reaching this objective with a run move. He's already stomped back six. So this is looking like the Grey Knights could be holding two objectives by the end of this turn. Let's see. We are going to do Grey Knight Psychic Phase turn six. The Dreadnought will doubtless be trying to put Sanctuary upon himself. Let's see. End of Grey Knight Psychic Phase turn six and the Dreadnought. He decided he did not want to risk a peril so he only used four of the seven dice that he ended up with. He managed to succeed in getting Sanctuary off with one. The guard tried to deny it but failed to roll a six with their six dice. So, let's see. Can the Dreadnought run far enough in Grey Knight's shooting phase turn six? And our Grey Knight shooting phase turn six and with a four inch run the Venerable Dreadnought is holding this objective. The Storm Raven, he decided he might as well fire a couple of snapshots with his missiles at the Lehman Russ. He rolled a double six to hit and he rolled another six so he has managed to inflict a glancing hit on this Lehman Russ but it doesn't matter. We have rolled. There will be no turn seven. This is the end of the conflict over this shrine and the relics it contains. The Astra Militarum, they hold one objective and they also manage to slay the Grey Knight's brother librarian, giving them a total of four points. But unfortunately for the Guardsmen and the Ecclesiarchy, the Grey Knights, they are holding this objective. The Storm Raven is holding the objective on the top floors of the Central Shrine. That's six points, and they also got First Blood for the Chimera and Slay the Warlord, bringing their total to eight. The final score then in this epic game is eight points to the Grey Knights, only four to the Astra Militarum and perhaps they can feel a little aggrieved. They seem to have a lot more assets left on the table although neither side has much at all really. It has been a close game. The Inquisition they are going to be very very happy. It's one in the eye to the Ecclesiarchy. Two of their best priests have gone down and the relics have ended up in the Inquisition's hands. This has been a great game. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and we will keep producing as many Warhammer 40,000 battle reports as we can. See ya.